Hello, so we're going to talk about constraint problems. And this is a problem that you're going to have on your test. Well, something similar to it. So the first thing I want you to do right now is to pause the video and actually write down this problem. Okay, so pause the video and write it word for word. So now I'm hoping that you have this written down and you've looked over it and we're going to talk about what our variables are going to be. So we're talking about um, X and Y and we always use X and Y because it's going to help us for graphing. So I'm going to have X be equal to type 1 bacteria and uh, Y is going to be equal to type 2 bacteria. And really I need to figure out what all of my equations are going to be. So um, we are told that each type of type 1 bacteria produces uh, four new viable bacteria and each sample of type 2 is three viable and they want at least 240. So that means that I'm going to have 4x plus 3y and that has to be greater than or equal to 240 because together they have to produce at least 240 bacteria. At least 30 but no more than 60 of the original sample must be type 1. So that means x has to be greater than or equal to 30 and x has to be less than or equal to 60. You can kind of write that as a compound inequality. You could have written it as uh, 30 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 60, but you don't have to. Now I'm going to be looking at the y and it says that uh, no more than 70 of the original type can be type 2 of the original sample can be type 2. So that means that y has to be less than or equal to 70. Now we're told that the sample of type 1 costs $5 and the sample of type 2 costs $7. How many samples of type 2 uh, bacteria should the biologist use to minimize cost? So here we're talking about just type 2, um, but our profit is going to be equal to 5x plus 7y and we want the least amount here and in the end it's actually asking just how many about uh, type 2 but we're going to have to figure out both anyways because we're figuring out the intersection point so now I need to graph these lines using the cover up method um, I would realize that of my first line my x intercept is going to be 60 and my y-intercept would be 80. Uh, with my graph, I'm going to go up by tens. So that's going to be over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So right here, sorry if this is off a little bit. And then up 80, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so that's that line. And now I know everything is going to be shaded above that because they need at least that amount. So I'm going to really be shading everything above. Um, from there, I'm told that I need at least 30. So between 30 and 60. So 30 and 60. So now our shaded region is going to be just stuff between these two parts. So now I'm looking at only the stuff between these two parts. But we have even more restrictions, right? Because we know that we need less than 70. We need less than 70. So I'll use the blue line for that. So anything less than 70. So that means that here is my solution point and I have a few different solutions that I can work from I have uh, okay I have the point 60 comma 70 I have the point which is just saying I have to use less than uh, 70 so that would be just 60 comma 0 because it says that I can have no more than uh, 70 and then I need to also have this intersection point here and this intersection point here and that uh, the top intersection point would be the top vertice uh, would be the point 30 comma 70 to find out this bottom point right there 
that one right there. I know that my x value is 30, so I'm going to plug that back in to the original and say 4 times 30 plus 3y is greater than or equal to 240. So that means 120 plus 3y is greater than or equal to 240, which means 3y is greater than or equal to 120, which means y is greater than or equal to 40. So that point there would be 30, comma, 40. And this is also why I wanted you to have this uh, written down in your notes, so that way you can be referencing this as I will be going away from that. So no more than 70 of the original sample can be type 2, so we have everything less than that. Um, and we are between that 30 and 40 zone. And we are trying to minimize costs. We're trying to minimize costs. Uh, yeah, okay. So that means that I want the cheapest amount. So I want the lowest amount of X and Y combination I can have. That instantly means that I don't want the point 60, 70 because that's going to be my biggest amount. I also know that if I don't want the point 30 comma 70 because 30 comma 40 30 comma 40 is actually smaller than that. So I'm really just down to 60 comma 0 and 30 comma 40. So if I want to check that out, I put p is equal to 5 times 30 plus 7 times 40 and then I'll check the other one which would be p is equal to 5 times 60 plus uh, 7 times 0. So my top one would be 150 plus 280, which is equal to 430. And the other one would be equal to 300. So I know that the best way I'm going to have this, my best method, is if I actually have 60 of the original type, 60 of type 1, and 0 of the old one or sorry, zero of type 2. So how many samples of type 2 should the uh, biologist use to minimize cost is zero. Yep, so zero bacteria of sample 2. And the reason that it's zero bacteria of sample 2 is because we're trying to minimize cost, and we know that it costs more for us to get sample 2 than it does for us to get sample one. Okay, any questions about that, bring them on Monday. Uh, I'm gonna have another video where you're going to walk through another problem. I'll reveal the answer, so I want you to try it and then uh, do it on your own. All right, thank you for watching.